Hello and welcome back to the Gotham Sound Expo International, second edition. Uh, right now I am joined by Philippe from Sanella. Bonjour, Philippe. Bonjour, Nick. Ça va? Ça va très bien. Très bien. Um, so, Philippe, uh, where in the world are you joining us from? France. France. Very good. And uh, Paris or a different, different part? We are, we are the, about uh, 12 kilometers from Paris in a very nice uh, workshop since uh, three years now. Very nice. And uh, give it, so that's the workshop there. What part of the workshop uh, are you in? Oh, yes, we are in the main assembling uh, area where you, we have plenty of little pieces and we just make the final assembling and soldering. Very nice. So, Philippe, I know you sent us uh, some pictures and slides and things that you wanted to talk about, about what's, uh, what's going on with Sanella. What, uh, what would you like to talk about? So, we have no real um, hot product, mm -hmm. new products, mm -hmm. only adaptations and things where we'll uh, talk about later on. Mm -hmm. But the main new product is probably our website, you know, in this uh, talk that it was... Uh, it was not absolutely necessary, but now it seems that to answer so many questions that we have every time about the adaptations and things. So this website, we took about three years to make it. I mean, plenty of dead, dead time, of course, mm -hmm. but, uh, but uh, now it's there. So that's the main homepage. And uh, the, very, um, the very first important thing to see there is that we have just a list of uh, microphones. So you can choose your microphone on the list on the, on the left uh, uh, bottom there. I mean, let me give you an example. If you choose uh, CMC1 from Sherps, uh, we consider that to have a C CMC1 in Limo or uh, in XLR, or with or without the filter cut 60 all these are not the same microphones mm. so we have four different microphones so when you go on the list you will see four different microphones or more but just for the CMC1 it's because physically it's not the same it's not the same distance uh, same length uh, same size same weight so we have to adapt it differently so that's the first point the second is that you can uh, choose multiply microphones. For example, you, you want to make an uh, MS pair of microphones. So you choose the first microphone, so the, the cardioid, for example, and then the figure of eight. And immediately the answer of your request will be uh, on the top of the list will be all MS uh, units that we can propose for this uh, pair of microphones. And then you have just an example of the main page of the Pianissimo. And uh, so you see a very quick, short presentation of the Pianissimo on the top page. And then you have uh, all the list of uh, uh, all the units associated with that. But never forget to click on the read about more about it. Mm -hmm. And then you will go in another area with plenty of information, like uh, adaptations, pictures, and uh, explanations. I was very enthused uh, when the website came out, because as you said, you know, it had been uh, quite some time before uh, since anything had been updated, and it's really comprehensive, uh, and it has all, almost all the information you could ever want, and the only information that is not there are the custom things that you do. And that was one thing that I wanted to talk about, uh, about one of the, the joys of, of doing business with Sonella is that, you know, despite the fact that you're six hours ahead of us, you, um, you're you generally available very late into the night and you reply at, at all hours and you uh, really give great solutions uh, to our customers, whether it's something that uh, that's listed on your website or whether it's something custom. Um, we, we, we just, we will have a page. It's, it's on the, on the pipe. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, we have a, a, just a page, a page showing, uh, uh, examples of samples of, uh, custom solution we can make. So, uh, people will be invited maybe to ask us about, um, other, any kind of specific adaptations. 
Yeah, that um, I'm thinking specifically about this. Uh, was it a buyer microphone? It was a very old, heavy microphone that you made a custom cradle for. <laughs> we we had some some crazy requests, and especially from uh, U.S. customers. <laughs> and so I was very happy to spend hours to to make a, a very crazy adaptation. And so uh, every time it's it's a pleasure to to make that. As, yeah. as far as I can find the time for it. And, and uh, yeah, I think, as I remember, the customer was very happy with it. So they were pleasantly surprised to find a solution for a microphone that previously didn't have a high wind solution. Okay. Uh, shall we go on the uh, picture number three? Um, yeah. And uh, while that uh, picture is coming up, I just want to say that we do have a comment, uh, Mart. Martijan Schultz uh, says, uh, best one out there by far, my hat off, sir. Um, so I just wanted to forward that message to you. Okay, very nice. Okay, great. So uh, go, <laughs> Hello, continue. Martin. Okay, so we uh, introduced also, uh, let's say that's a new, new product. It's just a new adaptation that I used to make, you know, in a very bad uh, 3D printed solution. Is the adaptation for the MKH50? You can where we see the, the the microphone inside it. I have it here. It's not exactly the MKH50. It's the 30. Sorry for that, but basically the same. So the this adaptation is very specific because the holder cannot be, uh, you know, uh, injected plastic one. Uh, for many reasons, we have to finish it by hand. It's uh, initially the, the MKH50 was not intended to to go to fit the, the, the cozy, so it was too big. So I had to find this uh, this solution, and now it uh, we find another way to make a 3D printing solution for that, and it's a very nice finish. So we can now make it as a standard uh, result. So what I wanted to show you is that for this kind of adaptation we have to accept something you see on the picture uh, is that there is some uh, you know um, two centimeters going mm -hmm. out uh, at the at the back so but this is absolutely acceptable you can uh, you can really make the same work than a standard cozy you know it's the same so no problem um just to people to understand, we can make other kind of adaptations. So uh, another example, which is now uh, quite, um, uh, well, we have requests for that. Uh, you know, the, the, there is one cosy for the 1417C with the short body and, and mi microphone. So this is a perfect fit for, for the cosy. But we had some requests for the B uh, version of the preamp. So... Uh, what is very simple to do is that with a very standard cozy for 1417C, you can just put that like that, mm. slide it, because mm. that's the same diameter from the, uh, you know, the XLR, so it fits perfectly. But so the, the adaptation is just to do it like that, you know. And another time to have the, um, let me just put the cable. So it's few centimeters more than you do not plug the very first one pin there but only the second one and it works so what i wanted to say is that with the, that kind of standard cozy you can also adapt this uh, in a very um, um, serious way so let me show you something so that that actually is something that works now because i did not know about that uh that option for the 4017b Yes, and we can do the same even for the CMIT. We can also adapt the regular long CMIT. Mm -hmm. But why is it so interesting? It's very simple. Look at that. Don't you think that is much more balanced than a traditional solution where you would have a suspension at the back mm -hmm. and a wind protection at the front? Mm -hmm. These solutions, every knows about wobbling, about noises, about things like that. Uh, here, you have something much more balanced, you know, so that keeps the interest of the cozy, uh, but even for some, some of these uh, solutions. Very cool. That's it. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine it for the CMIT, maybe the, the next picture, I think. 
Yes, and then you have the same for the CMIT. We do that from time to time. And I'm sure that can be interesting for people that cannot afford the, the mini CMIT version and uh, just keep the regular uh, CMIT for, for, for this application. And do you need a, I know with the B, the B is, is quite a bit shorter um, compared to the full size CMIT. Do you need a different cable to make that CMIT work? Or is no, it the no, same? no. As you, as you see, that's the same cable. Mm -hmm. That's the standard cable. So that's the, the, the good thing. Uh, you know, on these versions, uh, we have also shorter version. But on this one, I show you. So we have, you know, two little pins, one and two, mm -hmm. that's uh, mm -hmm. to, to make the classical uh, work for, for the cozy. But you are not obliged to put this one. I mean, you, you, you have a longer, it's uh, more free. Mm -hmm. uh, so just mm -hmm. remind that the length of this cable is also valid for, for some camera application and also very easy to exchange it by, for a longer one or different connectors or different version. So that's the standard um, uh, way to use the, the, the cosy. Great. I think the thing that I want to mention and something that's really come up a lot in the last um, six months has been the RF options for your cables. Um, that's been very popular. Yes. I, I think it's, it's very important to remind things. And uh, yes, so now definitely for this RF option, it's specific, you know, XLRs. And we have made some uh, metallic caps. So everything is completely metallic, which is very important. The cable is a fully braided shield. And we have uh, inside uh, RF filter also uh, for some uh, transmitters. But the main things to, to, to be said is that RF protection is not only a matter of cable. It's uh, hardly a matter of cable, but let me uh, give you some example. If you buy a new CMC1 from Sherps or even the KM184-85 series from Neumann, then both of these microphones are fully protected. I mean, you do not have to take care about the cable. You can use any kind of, of cable and it won't be hurted by digital transmitters. If you take, uh, on the opposite, if you take an old CMC5, or if you take, you know, the old series, the KM140, 150, then no way. Even if you have this, it won't work. The microphone is too old. It's not protected enough from scratch. Mm. And you mm. have all plenty of examples like the MKH50, which one day or this one works, this one won't. You are in between, you know. So there is no exact rule for this. I just advise to have the RF option, but it's not mandatory all the time. And that's available for, for all of your products. It's basically like just oh, yes. add the option. Yes. It's it's an option. You add a line on your purchase order, which is RF opt, mm -hmm. and that indicates you have a specific version of, of the cable. Yeah. So if you do have one of those older mics, you can try that first before sending it to, um, you know, before sending it away to get fixed. And that could save you That's time it. and money. Of course. So uh, Martin just had a, another comment that said, uh, you know, also put the transmitter far from the mic at the bottom of the boom pole is uh, is another option, uh, which... Oh, yes. Th That's the common rules and common solutions for whatever microphone and transmitter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so we have two more minutes. What else would you like to um, say? Uh, no, I just want to say that uh, rumors say that some microphone uh, manufacturer will will have a, an interesting uh, product okay. Uh, okay. quite soon, and we will be ready for that. Okay, great. Well, I, I will look forward to uh, seeing those rumors come true and to see what you have for those microphones. That's it. Okay, great. Well, look, I, th I think we've, we've reached the end of our time. Um, so merci beaucoup. Um, thank you for Merci being with us. Uh, as always, you can watch this video and more at GothamSound.tv. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and now TikTok. Uh, and as always, you can email us with your ideas and questions at info at GothamSound.com. Thanks again for watching.